Salutations everyone and welcome to the second episode of my Vacant Story Let's Play. And um, after the last episode contained almost exclusively the intro cinematics, which were rather long, uh, we will hopefully see a little bit more of the gameplay uh, in this episode. But I can't promise anything. So let's get started or let's continue. So uh, as you can probably see in the lower right corner we have a map which shows us the room we are in and uh, basically the game is uh, separated into smaller rooms which are interconnected to each other. Um, the layout is fixed so there is no um, random element and as our first treasure chest with uh, a weapon, a shield and a glove and two consumable items, one which restores our health and one which lowers our risk which I will get to in a moment and let's just get all of this. So treasure chests also contain fixed loot so there's uh, also no random element so it's not entirely like you would expect from an actual dungeon crawler which usually have a strong um, randomized element. Um, this game has not. And right now that we are inside the inventory screen I can uh, explain a little bit about how the uh, actual combat system and the inventory or the weapon system works. And as you can see on the left side is a list of um, well enemy types or enemy classes as the game calls it and a list of values. So we have a total of six enemy classes human, beast, undead, phantom, dragon and evil and each weapon has a certain strength or weaknesses against those. So negative values mean that um, the weapon does decreased damage against that enemy type and positive values mean increased damage. And as you can see our starting weapon, the Fandango, is well actually not very good at anything. And the Tovarish is actually worse we just got. On the lower right side you can see the uh, base values which is uh, the range of the weapon which are for the Tovarish and the Fandango, since they are rather short, one-handed weapons is the same. And you can see the amount of risk uh, the weapon will generate when we use it, or when you, when you use a standard attack with it. The attack, uh, the attack value of its strength and attack value over intelligence. So this is of course the, the simple weapons, one-handed weapons are of course mainly uh, simple physical weapons. And there's also the agility meter which more or less decreases our defense value if I remember correctly but I might be wrong about this if someone else uh, can inform me about that that would be nice. Uh, in the upper left corner you can see two um, gauges DP and PP. DP is damage points which is durability so to speak which decreases as you use a weapon and PP is uh, <laughs> Phantom points, which you collect by defeating enemies, and once the scale is full, a weapon will do more damage. And yeah, that's for that. And as you can see by pressing square, we can also change the table on the left side and to affinity and type. Affinity is essentially the uh, type of elemental damage you do. And as a purely physical weapon, these weapons do only physical damage, which you can see, also can see by physical being uh, white text and all the others being uh, grey text. They are weapons who do elemental damage, this one does not. And of course the type of damage that the weapon does, which um, is the possibilities are blunt, edged and piercing, and this weapon only has edged damage. So the actual complication of this game is that um, a weapon needs to have a high class 
affinity or high class values to be of use to certain enemies. So the basic idea would be of course to just drive all the values up, but that is unfortunately not possible in this game. Um, each weapon can have only two values um, which are non-exclusive. What I mean is, um, if you raise one value by fighting a certain type of enemy, other values will rise, except for one other. And I'm just not sure which belong, uh, which uh, um, types of glasses go together, but I think it was human and phantom, for example. I'm not sure if it's true, but these are the only two values this weapon, for example, could have at high values, and the other other types would be low. And what that means is that you need at least three weapons to cover all types of enemies, but then you have to also consider the type of damage you do, which um, any of you who have played Dark Souls, for example, which uses a similar damage type for its um, damage types for its uh, close combat weapons, blunt, edge and piercing, or strike, or blunt is strike in, in Dark Souls, if I remember correctly. Um, certain types of enemies are more resistant to certain damage types, and uh, this all gets very complicated very quickly, since you have to account for the damage type you must do to uh, maximize damage, and what class your enemy is, and by, for some enemies, of course, also the affinity of the weapon, and so on and so forth. So, in the end of the day, you are constantly changing weapons to um, more effectively combat enemies, but uh, unfortunately you can't have an unlimited amount of weapons. As you can see here, we have an inventory of a maximum of 8 weapons. And um, you will see this screen often, as I will have to constantly change and shift uh, my weapons around to maximize damage. At the moment we don't have much options because we only have two well weapons and but this will grow over time. The same is of course also true for uh, our armor sets. Let's look at this. So we have our shield, we have uh, left and right arm are different uh, equipment slots actually which is odd, and the head, body and legs of course, and another uh, accessory, which we have the root necklace, which uh, actually you can actually see on the model here. Um, this one at least does not much, it gives you some added protection against, as you can see, the undead and the evil, but uh, decreases protection against phantom and dragon, or has very low protection against phantom and dragon. <laughs> So, um, yeah, be prepared to see this often. So, well, let's start, of course. Right at the moment, our combat possibilities are rather limited to, well, just a single strike. We have no magic and no chain skills, which we will hopefully unlock in this episode, if I actually manage to stop talking. And, yeah. And what type of damage you do, and you can actually see at the target information at the uh, lower edge of the screen, the three parameters at the lower right show you, the first shows you what type of damage you do, that is in this case edged, and what affinity that weapon, or affinity damage you do, that is physical, and the last parameter is the type of enemy that you are attacking, or the type of target you are attacking, which in this case is the bat. And uh, hopefully a single strike should be enough to kill it. And it actually was. So, and yes, um, prepare to see block puzzles all the way and everywhere. Because for some inexplicable reason they decided a dungeon crawler needs block puzzles. A tactical dungeon crawler. So, we didn't get very far without the next cut. Well, huh. Ah, locked doors, they are 
dangerous thing. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> man, those scouts, man, man. All these apostroves, it's oh, terrible. Can't they speak properly? Hmm, I smell revelations. And the game helpfully tells us which doors are locked by the nice little lock symbol on the. Uh, the chamomile signature? Interesting. Chamomile. That's one way to put it. So. Next cutscene. Hey! What could it be? What great revelation could we see? It is! It is! A floating stone. Well, it's uh, uh It's definitely supernatural, but it, it's not so impressive. There's a chest over there. Interesting. Miracles. Yes. Unbelievable miracles. I mean, they are unbelievable, but still a floating stone. It's really not, uh, not, uh, how to put it, too overwhelming. Oh no. Well, he is certainly pragmatic, and the other one is not. Hmm. I agree. What else could it be? Like, don't you? I doubt that. Ooh, I wouldn't say too loudly. Man, these people have filthy mouths. He really is not very good at sneaking, I have to say. So, let's see, where do we do the most damage? Of course. At the hand, but you also have the lowest probability of hitting him. Ah, oh, let's do it anyway. Aha! And as you can see on the lower left corner, our weapon has increased its uh, class affinity by one point for human. So as we continue using this weapon against human enemies, we become ooh, increasingly better at killing them. And you might notice that the uh, the accuracy of our attack has decreased. That's because we have a value, a risk value of one. Let's increase risk a little bit. And let's use this opportunity to explain risk. Essentially, each attack and special attack and everything you do increases your risk meter. What does risk do? Well, not much good, <laughs> actually. Um, it increases the damage your character takes. Incidentally, it also increases the, heal the healing you receive if you heal yourself, so it's not too bad. Um, but the most important, in fact, is of course that it decreases accuracy. And quite heavily at higher values. Uh, so, yeah, it's really not a good thing. Although it has one, one good effect, um, it increases the magnitude of critical hits, if I remember correctly. 
So essentially, risk is uh, something of a, well, risky proposition. If you have a lot of it, you can potentially do a lot of damage, but you're also limited um, to high accuracy weapons, which usually don't do much damage, and you are taking more damage, which is especially against bosses, which can do a lot of damage can mean swift and sudden death and let's kill him yeah. right now risk is easily manageable because we have no form of special attack only our standard attack and that is not doing too much and as you can also see on the left lower corner is that while our weapon did get better at uh, fighting humans, it did get worse at fighting undead. So... And he... Missed with our chance. And our weapon got better at physics. However that works. So... I remember seeing... Um, ah, it's a save point. Yes. Ah, yes, I remember. The, these uh, chests are... Um, just for storage where you can put weapons and other stuff and they are usually found next to safe points which is the blue sigil on the ground and they can retrieve the um, and you can they are all interconnected so we can um, save space in your limited inventory uh, but uh, well considering this is a uh, PlayStation 1 game not all is fine because the uh, chest storage actually has its own separate um, save file and uh, it gets very complicated using this thing so I will not show this too often hopefully so let's get over here with the help of our trusty um, floating cobblestone And another earthquake. Who knew? And I hear another bat and a wolf. Haha! -ha. And you may have noticed that the uh, corpses disappear, unlike the uh, two guards we killed in the uh, prologue. This is actually important to try to keep in mind. So I always forget that the opening doors is not the circle button. All right, more soldiers to kill. Wow, that's a very fuzzy image. Hmm. These people all have such narrow waists. That's strange. Ow. And he has apparently better armor, because we don't do so much damage. Actually, he has bad armor in the arms. Oh, let's strike his sword arm. Before he gets any funny ideas. And he's still alive. So that was number one. There should be another one. Or not. So. Oops. Yeah, so he's ready to attack us, which means he will attack us as soon as we're down. Hey! And he also takes increased damage. The arms. Ow. Do do. And he dropped nothing, of course. So 
And as you can also see, our um, health regenerates relatively fast, as long as we are not in battle mode. Which somewhat cuts down on consumption of healing things. Nope, nope, you're not. So took care of the bats and <laughs> and apparently we parried successfully with our shield. That's why we took barely any damage, which is useful, all things considered. And a trap! Oh my! Goodness, a trap filled with bats and wolves. Fascinating. You can keel over and stand up while in the air. Impressive. I might have hit the uh, table. And dead. So, <sighs> and what you get here, we get a crossbow, the seventh heaven, another glove, and some more consumables. And as you can probably imagine, uh, crossbows do piercing damage and have the highest range of all weapons in the game. Uh, the disadvantage is that they are two-handed, which means you can't use a shield while using it. So you are basically sacrificing some damage output for um, defense. And I mean the other way around, of course. And I can see that we're already over 20 minutes, so I guess we will uh, make a break here and I will see you at the next episode where we will pro uh, proceed through this very much a door here. And until then, I wish you all a most pleasant day and goodbye.